Uh, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Justin Kimbrough. Uh, Justin is the founder and art director of Helix Creative. Began developing, I'm sorry, he began designing professionally in 2001 after graduating from Murray State University. Since 2001, Justin has opened 13 different businesses, most of which revolve around some sort of graphic design from Texas to Connecticut. Some of his local businesses include Helix Creative, Mid-South Sign Company, ShopMyKentucky.com, and 11th Hour Studios. Justin's main focus is website development, branding, and advertising campaigns. His companies employ around 50 people, and he has accumulated over 5,000 clients across the U.S. He's a long-term board member of the Murray Calloway County Chamber of Commerce, as well as the Murray Kentucky Tourism Bureau, and Western Kentucky's Western Waterlands Tourism Initiative. So great pleasure again to turn over the podium to uh, Justin Kimbrough. Welcome, Justin. Thank you. Um, appreciate you guys having me here. Um, Dr. Johnson emailed me last week and I said I'd love to come talk to you guys about my story, my history, what we do at Helix, what I've done since I graduated Murray State. So um, basically I graduated in 2001 from Murray State, it shows my age, um, with a uh, with graphic arts and communication degree. Um, since then I've opened about 13 companies um, from Connecticut to Florida to Texas and I have one in North Carolina. Uh, they are all based around graphic design, some sort of graphic design. Uh, printing, website design. We just started a new app development company in North Carolina as well. Um, the company that I own in Connecticut, in Milford, Connecticut, is actually an arcade. It has nothing to do with graphic design, but it's fun. So I get to play Batman and Star Wars all the time uh, whenever we fly up there. Um, so, uh, so, so basically, I got started in graphic design in, in high school. We all kind of, you know, do what we do there. Um, I was one of the lucky ones. I knew what I wanted to do when I, um, when I got to college, and I did it. Um, it only took me six or seven years to graduate, so that turned out pretty good. Uh, I uh, also got my master's with Murray State University, um, almost done with those. They want me to teach full-time. It's not exactly what I want to do, but I do like it. It's fun. Um, I teach four classes over at Wilson Hall uh, in the lab, GCM 153. It's called Digital Imaging. We do uh, Microsoft Word, uh, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, and Adobe InDesign. Um, I have 78 students over there. Every one of them are absolutely awesome, and uh, even the ones that fail. Um, and uh, so basically, uh, my role, what I do is I'm, I'm kind of the art director for all of my companies. Um, I manage about 48, 49 employees, <clears throat> depending on how mad I am at one of them at the time. And um, they, stra they strange all the way from, from Fort Lauderdale. I've got a company in Fort Lauderdale that just does designs for yacht companies. Um, we do embroidery and stuff like that for blankets and towels and stuff and yachts. Um, I've got a uh, 11th Hour Studios is in Murray. Helix Creative is in Murray. Um, we basically do pretty much everything you see around town locally from about a 100 mile radius. We don't get out much further than 100 miles or so. Um, we, uh, we do, this year alone, we've printed about 4 million business cards. So anything from a two inch business card to um, Right now, we're in the middle of developing a 15,000-page uh, website for Western Kentucky's uh, Kentucky Lake, Lake Barkley, and LBL area. It's a tourism initiative um, to get people from other states to visit us over here and give us their economic stimulus. Um, as far as Helix goes, Helix is my, my mother company. It's my mothership, I guess you would say. Uh, we do everything from the smallest kinds of graphic designs, the two-inch stickers, to you know, again, uh, 15,000 page websites um, and everything in between. Uh, my focus is mainly in app design, website design, and then branding and marketing campaigns. Um, we work for Murray State University, obviously. Um, some of the bigger corporations, we work for Ken Lake, we work for Briggs & Stratton. Um, EWAS um, is one of our newer customers, one of our bigger customers. Um, if any of you guys go to any of the Murray State basketball games or any of the football games, everything you see out there is pretty much comes from my office. Um, from the signage all around the, 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 the brick wall from sponsors to the, the, uh, the scoreboard at Murray State. Uh, we wrapped Reagan Field's uh, scoreboard the other day. Um, so that's, that's part of Mid-South Vinyl. That's kind of our, our signage company. And then we have a you know, graphic design company as well. Um, the companies in Texas mainly revolve around printing. We do a lot of signage for trade shows and stuff. Uh, retractable banner stands. I know you guys seen those like around here. I own a manufacturing company that takes care of that. Um, we do a lot of pop-up displays and lots of trade show graphics. Uh, about the only thing we don't do is, is TV video. Um, that's the one thing that I've never gotten into. 
and uh, don't really plan on it either. There's plenty of those guys around here. They don't need me for it. Um, we do, um, last year alone, uh, I guess some neat little facts or whatever, we do a lot of online advertising. Uh, print advertising is tough in 2016. Um, we used to spend about $10 million a year just in advertising and print. Last year we spent almost $30 million just in web advertising. Not my money, but other people's money. People that trust me to spend their money for them. Um, I, have a, uh, I have a vested interest, I'll call it, in the bowling alley in TAP 216 here. Those are, um, I have a vested interest in those, so <clears throat> eat and drink all you want there um, if you want to. Um, so other, you know, other local stuff, shopmykentucky.com is an apparel company that, uh, that, um, that we just started about six months ago. Uh, it's just based around Kentucky. When graphic designers get bored, we just open up new companies and start designing more stuff. That's what we do. Um, so uh, basically, I guess I can hit this choose source doc. Is that right? And it'll show the PC. Is that how that works? Yeah. So this is just our, our company's website, just to give you an idea of kind of what we do. Um, again, lots of branding and logo design, advertising campaigns, publication designs. Um, Murray Life Magazine, Purchase Family and Parenting Magazine, if you guys have ever seen those things around. Uh, we do lots of website development, and we just started app development. And then, of course, I own four printing companies across the United States that prints everything from business cards to the 30-foot billboards that you see going up and down the highways here. Uh, we do all that kind of stuff as well. Um, some, of our, some of our customers, um, I'm really big into tourism um, on a personal level and on a business level. So... Um, Everything, mainly Kentucky. We stick in Kentucky. I've got a small one in, in Raleigh, North Carolina as well. Um, it's a bar hopper website. Um, Murray Bank, Paducah Dental. I know you guys don't know a lot of these guys. Primary Care Medical Center is one of our largest customers. They're the largest private hospital. Um, and, of course, all we, you know, Murray State University is a big customer of ours. Uh, your electric company where you pay your bill. Everything that you see there, I always do. Um, so some of the other companies that we own or that I own, um, Shop My Kentucky is an apparel company. Um, we just do, uh, mainly we started doing t-shirts and stuff like that. Just again, we get bored after work, so we just work more. That's what we do. Um, anything we can draw and do or whatever. Um, it's just kind of a, a very small online store only kind of thing. Um, you know, we just, we just get bored and we, we make more stuff. That's just what we do, right? Um, some of uh, another one of my companies is a, is a big initiative for Kentucky Lake, trying to bring people to Kentucky Lake. So it's called AboutKentuckyLake.com, and it's a it's kind of a surrounding website that takes care of about anything from Dover, Tennessee, all the way to Metropolis, Illinois. If you guys can reference that, uh, Lake Barkley, uh, it's the Four Rivers region, so it's Tennessee River, Ohio River, um, Kentucky Lake, Lake Barkley, and the OBL area. And again, it's just, it's basically a, a a website that we sell ads on. Um, we should hit a record somewhere this year, about, about a quarter of a million dollars worth of advertising on the website. Uh, there's only a couple of other competitors in the area that do this, and um, they're probably in the, over a million dollars. Uh, we're brand new. We're really small. Um, this is from 11th Hour Studios, one of my partners in North Carolina we do it with. Um, I also have a photography studio, so all these pictures are ours, um, or the, I take all these um, different parts of the Western Kentucky and stuff like that. Um, Tourism, this is uh, Murray, Kentucky's website. We built it, of course. Um, everything in Murray and in our area is always based around the lakes. You know, it's like a, I think it's a $2.5 billion industry. Um, and it's not just from out of state. Staycations are getting really big now. Uh, people that are from Metropolis will just make a quick hour trip down, you know, kind of like a day trip deal. So we push all that stuff um, over um, to our websites and, 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 again, promote the area as much as we can. Um, we do do a few videos. I, I guess I lied a little bit. I do do some video, but I don't, I don't actually promote it or anything. Um, this is our skyline that we drew years ago, and um, it's been on every Murray State t-shirt and every billboard in town. If you, um, if you go down at 6880 or over at 121, those digital billboards, um, those, are, those are ours. Um, we have uh, two digitals and nine static billboards that we run advertisements on. Uh, monthly and and uh, and weekly, they're really really cool. I can actually upload videos from my phone or images right from my phone and pop it right to the billboard. Um, say for instance, it's it's got like a live RSS feed, so if you have even like live feed from like a basketball game or something, I can even flash the scores and stuff. It's a super cool. They won't let us actually do that because it's kind of against DOT regulations to flash stuff up like that. So we have to have a small flash on it. Um, I do all the graphics, too, for the big one in front of Mr. B's that you can see from Mr. B's on the CFSB Center. We do some of that stuff. Um, 
I talk fast, so if, but if you need me to slow down or anything, let me know. Uh, I'm not really a speaker. I hide in my office and draw all day. That's what I do. Um, what else? Uh, we do, you know, things from, from Murray. I don't know. We just launched these new posters last week. Um, I do all the design for Murray State Athletics, so these are, these are, you can't see that, can you? The other guys. Um, so these are, these are the new Murray State men's basketball posters that we just printed for Murray State and designed um, a couple of, like last week or two weeks ago. Uh, obviously the men's basketball. I take the photography, I do the design, we do, uh, we do most of the printing and everything for these guys. Um, they just kind of hand us uh, what they want and we take it and we kind of roll with it. And then we also do, you know, the women's, of course. Uh, these are just the seniors. That's why they, that's how they pick who they want to be on there. It's always usually always the seniors or whatever. So um, we do that kind of stuff. We even print cups. So Frank Beamer, I don't know if you guys are big sports fans or not, but Frank Beamer's a big deal, and he was from Murray State. So um, we printed these up and uh, designed these for the football game not too long ago. Um, publication design is one of my big my big ones. Um, here's some of our. We launched a company. That's what I do, just launch companies, um, called The Bride to Be Book. And so it's just a, it's just a book about uh, brides and weddings, and it gets uh, more or less the photographers and venues and places like that together with brides and things. Uh, obviously, we write the articles and sell ads and do stuff like that, and then we design, you know, just, just whatever, um, depending, on, depending on the issue. Everything's a little different, each, each issue. It's an annual magazine, comes out around uh, Valentine's Day every year. Uh, this is the chamber book. This is our view book. It's an annual uh, publication. It's kind of like what it's like to live in Murray. Um, everything from our crime rates to our, you know, uh, industry. Um, again, this is a publication put out by the Chamber of Commerce, but Helix Creative actually designs it, uh, writes the articles for it, and then prints it and gets it all ready. Um, Murray Life Magazine is uh, it's a magazine. It's actually owned by another professor here in Murray, uh, Robert Valentine. I don't know if you guys know Professor Valentine or not. Um, he writes all the articles. I take the photography. Um, we print it, take care of it, you know, um, some of our publications. Um, and again, obviously, we print T-shirts, um, uh, things like that. I don't know. Any, any questions so far? My history is short. I really don't have a lot of history. I don't have a lot, you know, so um, any questions about anything? Nothing yet? Gosh. Oh, um, what else do I talk about, Dr. Johnson? Um, we, um, we, uh, my favorite type of advertising is probably online advertising for, for, for a really, really good reason. Um, print is not dead. You'll hear a lot of people say that print advertising is dead. Um, I'm more in advertising than I am marketing, but it always comes along with it. Um, newspaper designs um, and advertising and marketing is, is a lot tougher than it used to be. Uh, some of the biggest newspapers in the country have closed. Some of the oldest newspapers in the country have closed. Um, Social media and web online advertising has gotten much, much bigger simply because you can track it. You know, I can tell you um, how you got to my website, what you typed in to find it, what page you came in on, what you looked at while you were there, how long you were there, uh, what page you left on, if you called me. I, I put a tracking pixel on every website that I build. Uh, it follows you around. You guys have probably seen retarget marketing. You're on Amazon and you're looking for a, a Halloween costume for, I don't know, whatever, and then you flip back over to Facebook and there's that. There's that ad right there, and that's called retarget marketing. Um, that's big brothers like me. I put a pixel in it. I follow you around and stick it in your uh, stick it in your box so it stays there and follows you around. And hopefully, you'll buy something later. Um, Google Google's cracking down on that stuff pretty hard. It doesn't like what I do. Um, doesn't like me creeping around and following you guys. Um, but there's uh, there's big money in that, and uh, the rate of return is huge in that. Um, we also do a lot of direct mail pieces. Last year, um, by by July, uh, we work for a lot of hospitals too. Pharmacies and hospitals are a big division of ours. Um, by July, we'd send out over 100 million pieces of mail. So right, I'm spamming you in your inbox and in your mailbox, um, but it works. Uh, direct mail actually has the highest rate of return of any type of advertising. It's also the most expensive though. Um, one of the other reasons that print media like direct mail and newspapers and magazines aren't as uh, favorable as they used to be, um, you know, you've got price and you've got trackability. Um, you've also got instant gratification, you know, so right now um, we're, we're, we're somewhere between 280 and 300 different social media accounts that we run from anywhere from a pest control company to, uh, you know, um, uh, what's another weird one we run? We run lots of car dealers, we run lots, lots of hospitals and stuff. Uh, we do a lot of Murray State social media as well, only the good stuff, not the bad stuff. Um, 
So uh, if you guys have, have walked up to the Kerr Center lately, we just wrapped those windows with all the new statistics and stuff. I don't know if you've seen those. They put the new sliding doors in. Um, so we've done all that stuff. Uh, but back to the instant gratification of, of social media comes in. There's, you know, there's nothing better than getting a quick like you know, on something or a quick share or a comment. And you can't do that in a newspaper. Um, back in um, the mid-2000s, I guess, when I was really, really ramping up advertising, I had this extremely archaic way of tracking my advertising costs. You know? So if I put together, um, you guys know Saladino and Oaks is one of the big law firms in Paducah. We do a lot of work for those guys. Uh, Edwards and Counts as well. Um, we would develop billboards and we'd buy different 1-800 numbers and we'd just put a different 1-800 number on each billboard and that was the only way I could really track you. Um, if I put something in a newspaper, I might say something like, you know, DUI called Jan for, you know, to, for a consultation. Well, there was no Jan that worked there, so whatever I put Jan in, we knew that's what, what, track, uh, what we could track. Um, but again, social media and websites uh, have really, really changed advertising. You can't hide from the web. Um, you can't hide behind a proxy, so I can't track you. But uh, for the most part, I can track anything online, and I can follow you around and, and see what your buying habits are. I can see what your browsing habits are, um, and then I adjust what I'm designing to basically sell you on, on whatever it is you want to sell. Um, I just started a partnership with Google Experiments and Google Labs. They, uh, you may have been to a website a couple of times and seen that the website has changed even from that morning at 8 a.m. to that night at 8 p.m., um, what we do is we design multiple home pages on a, on a website, and um, some people won't buy from a green website. Some people don't like red. So what we'll do is we'll change the CSS and the colors of all the websites, and Google will serve it to you at different points. And then what we'll do is we'll track what you did. Did you stay on a red website longer? Or did you stay on a green website longer? Um, so just depending on how those goals and conversions are wrapped up is how do we then push the real money towards whatever we want to advertise to you. So... Um, so again, you can't do that with a newspaper ad. You know, a newspaper ad lasts 24 hours. You know, if it's a weekly newspaper like the Murray State News, you might get a full week out of it. I don't know. Uh, if it rains, nobody saw your newspaper ad, right? Nobody's going out in the rain to read, a, read the newspaper. So, um, so again, you know, the life is moving. Gosh, I know you guys hate to hear that. Life is moving online, right? My grandmother still says everything's moving to computers these days. <laughs> it's been there for a while. Um, you know, online stuff is, is new. I know it's been around for a long time, but when you think about I don't know, Marconi with the television or whatever, you know, it's been around since the you know, 30s, 40s, 50s. So yes, the, you know, the internet is still extremely new. We're still exploring it um, every day. Um, you know, there's lots of new stuff going on all the time. And, you know, I'm just a old country boy from Murray, Kentucky. So I don't know everything out there, but I know enough, uh, you know, to get, to get through some stuff. Um, that's pretty much my history. That's pretty much what my companies do. Um, question? I did. Uh, it, it's it's not a glamorous story. Um, my grandmother, um, she uh, she went blind in 1996, and um, we were a part of uh, this group called the National Federa Federation of the Blind. And I created some flyers on this old 1990, you know, computer, and they did really good. And they we lobbied and, uh, and we started a new group. And you know, all the old people are like, "Hey, you should do that for a living, right? Yeah, I should I should do that." Um, owning your own business. Uh, Graphic design is not um, is not a uh, it's not always a lucrative business. Um, if you want to make real money, be a lawyer and accountant. Okay, um, you can make really good money in, in, in advertising and graphic design. Obviously, um, I've done okay for myself. You know, but if you want to stay in a small town, if you want to, you know, I was born and raised right here in Murray. I didn't. I never. I never really left except to, you know, go do business here and there. Um, it doesn't really have like a cool vibe. You know, in Murray, it's like, hey, you're an artist in Kentucky. You know, it's not it's not that cool. You know, if you really want to do something cool, you have to go up Madison Avenue in New York, right, or Chicago or something like that. Um, but I didn't want to leave Murray. I loved it here. It's a nice town. Um, I, I, I self-proclaimed that I made this the most friendly small town award. I uh, gave Rand McNally and USA Today my guacamole recipe and while they were down, and we won the next day. So I'm pretty sure um, that I had something to do with that, right? So... Um, uh, I've, uh, I own a lot of businesses, and they take up a lot of time. Um, I came to work at 3 o'clock Sunday morning, and I didn't leave till Monday night. I worked like 42 hours straight. Um, I've logged over 70 hours in four days. You know, I'm tired. I didn't eat lunch for two days this week. Um, but I love it. I wouldn't trade it for anything. And um, I teach classes at Murray State on Tuesdays and Thursdays for four or five hours each day. Um, great students. And, you know, you gotta, if you love what you do, right, you never work a day in your life. You always heard that. I like what I do. So... I don't know. That's my story. You guys have any 
questions, any comments? Ma'am. My main goal? For I want to retire your... at 40. Uh, <laughs> your main goal to run like all your business and be successful? Um, I want to hand everything over to my kids one day, basically. Um, you know, um, it's, it's the age old story. I grew up with nothing, and uh, I've, I've made something for myself. Uh, my super old history, my dad worked at a sawmill for like 150 bucks a week. Like he, We grew up in a, in a mobile home um, for most of my life, and you know, now I have four or five houses and a condo in Florida. and you know, uh, stuff and things. And, you know, it's not about money. I'm not really a money guy, but I don't want to be the richest guy in the cemetery either. Um, but basically, I just want my kids to have a better life than I did. And I want, you know, um, I'm very benevolent, uh, especially about where I live in western Kentucky itself. I really want this area to, to be in a, you know, a, a huge financial success and economic stimulus. The, the lakes we have are, are um, when you're, when you're from here, when you're around these areas, you don't appreciate those things. You know, we get over a million website hits a month right from people from all over the united states and all over the world like interested in kentucky lake why wouldn't they be looking at lake michigan or something like that you know i, I don't know you know but but kentucky lake alone um lake barkley's smaller kentucky lake's got more of a, a prestigious uh a, a name or whatever um but but basically yeah i just you know i want to i want to be successful um I'm, I'm a fame guy instead of a money guy i don't care anything about money at all um you know um but but yeah that's it's basically what I want to do, just kind of give everything to my kids and whenever I'm gone, the community, I guess, something like that. Are any of you guys interested in graphic design or, you know, obviously you're in a marketing class. Is it a, is it a have-to class or, you know, you're here because you want to be? Any, any design majors, any TV video guys in here? No? No? Business? You guys are mainly business guys or whatever. Um, you got to have a. I'm not a great businessman. I'm a really good graphic artist. I'm a terrible businessman, and I don't have a problem saying that to anyone. Um, I was in a meeting this morning in, in in Mayfield, and the guy was like, "You know, what do you charge to do this?" And I gave him a price, and he was like, "Holy crap, that's cheap! How do you live?" I really like what I do, so I can do everything really fast and really inexpensive, and you know, take care of my customers and stuff like that. So um, I don't plan on expanding or opening up any more businesses. I'm I'm done. Um, for a while, I guess. Let's see. Any other questions? Anything? Dr. Johnson, you have any, anything to add or ask? Yeah, I have a quick question for you. What would you recommend for somebody who wants to you know, break into, you know, media promotion, um, you know, maybe a niche that's not filled up yet, uh, that's on the way up? What would you say somebody should do to, to get a toehold in the industry? Right. Um, you know, leave town. <laughs> uh, Murray's, Murray's, Murray's really hard. Most of, most of my customers, 50% of my customers are here, but the other 50% are all across the United States. Um, you know, it, to, to break into media, uh, the best advice I ever got was from another professor, and he, you know, he was like, don't, I really wanted to open up my own business in, in 01 and 02, and uh, he was like, you really shouldn't do that. You should really go make your mistakes on someone else's dime. Go screw up somewhere else first, right? Um, so I went to FLW Outdoors first, and that's where I really, really, really learned some good, um, some good graphic design. We published a Saltwater magazine, a Walleye magazine, and a Bass magazine, uh, and then a Red Eye or a, uh, magazine. And um, um, it's you, you can't learn everything yourself. You can, you can practice, and you can, you can try, and you can, you can do, you know, um, any kind of deduction you want to. But, but you always need something to bounce off somebody else. You know, I always feel like I'm right. But I'm not always right, so um, you know, get in early and make your mistakes somewhere else, and then do what you want to do when you're young. Uh, one of these days, I'm going to be too old to know what's cool, which is probably one of my biggest fears. Um, I used to work with a designer that was like 65 years old, and design's all about basics, you know. Um, I know that orange and, and and purple go together just because that's the way I was born. Um, and when you're in class, they're going to teach you, hey, those are tertiary colors on the color wheel, right? You know. Um, and he knew all the basics and stuff, but like his typefaces were were just really antiquated and archaic, and his design was very, very old. Um, and I don't want anybody to ever think that I'm the old guy still trying to design something, right? Like, um, I'll go into some sort of uh, some sort of an IT development or some kind of something like that later. Um, but yeah, the good best advice is is find a big company with lots of resources that that's got lots of training and um, you know, watch YouTube. Anything else? Any other questions? I feel awfully boring. Yeah.
What's the biggest Everybody mistake going? you ever? The biggest what's mistake? The biggest mistake you've ever made. You were just talking about how we should go out and make mistakes. Well, what's I, the biggest um, mistake you ever made? That was for my own company. Um, Lourdes Hospital is one of the largest hospitals in Western Kentucky. And um, we did a, a, a mailer about Obamacare a few uh, few years ago, and um, I screwed up bad, and it cost me $28,000. And um, I wish I'd have done that on somebody else's dime instead of mine, but I had to eat that whole thing. It was my fault. Uh, we just misrepresented it some text, and um, that was probably the biggest financial mistake I've ever made that cost me money. Um, I screwed up really bad not investing and partnering with a guy uh, who's a – gazillionaire right now um he's got several jets and several yachts and several things and i just wanted the 50 bucks an hour to design something for him instead of doing it for free and taking a cut and that was another big mistake of mine so don't don't overlook those opportunities if you can i screwed up that's okay though Hey, Justin, you mentioned that partnership with Google where you sort of do A-B testing, I guess, with different yep. um, designs. Do you yep. think that's eventually going to kind of drive out some of the creativity, of the, just the empirical data the, uh, that sure. they had, would have on everything? They kind of make, oh, well, you don't be creative because we know red's better than blue, so we're not even going to try blue. You know what I mean? It is. It is. It's, it's, it's kind of frustrating. I'm, uh, I'm extremely left-brained and right-brained at the same time. I, I love art and design, but at the same time, I'm extremely logical and analytical. Um, I probably spend anywhere from 10 to 12 hours a week just on analytics. Um, and I, I just, I, I read and I research and I look. We built, uh, let's see, we've probably done, it's almost November. Um, we've probably done almost 200 websites or so this year alone. You know, um, I build multiple websites every month. You know, some, once I, I, I built 25 websites in a week once. And, um, and it's, it's, it's my, um, it's my duty, it's my job, you know, to tell my customers, hey, your website's not performing the way it needs to be. Um, I had a guy call me this morning and he said, hey, Kimbro, my, uh, when I search quail hunting, my website doesn't come up anywhere. He owns a, a preserve in Crittenden County. And, uh, and I like to educate and I like to, you know, tell Russell, his name is Russell, and he was like, why am I showing up on Google? And, um, well, uh, the name of his lodge is Wing, you know, is, is Wing Haven Lodge. And if you do a, a keyword density test on how many times the word quail shows up in his website, it shows up one time. So quail hunting in Kentucky is not going to show up on his website because it's irrelevant because everything we say is shooting sportsmen or wing shooting or something like that. Um, so as far as empirical data goes, um, you, you, you lose a lot of your creativity um, because I already know what works and I don't really want to reinvent the wheel. Um, sadly, the faster you can do something, um, the more efficient, the more economic it is. And so we, we reuse a lot of code when we can um, and we already know most of the stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, left and right brain really, really fight me constantly, um, trying to do what I want to do, but then knowing what I'm supposed to do already makes it kind of tough. Crickets. Have y'all gotten into like the wall graphics? Yeah. I do all the wall graphics at Murray State. Uh, if you've been in Alexander Hall, if anybody's been in Alexander, um, there's a huge word cloud. I, um, I designed and installed that a couple of semesters ago. Um, there's some great big ones on the ramps and stuff. We put all those in there. Um, we have a company called Wall Appeals. I didn't mention it. Um, it's just uh, it's an interior signage company. Um, you know, a lot of graphic design, marketing, um, printing, it's, 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 it's really, really psychological. I took a lot of psychology classes, too, um, to learn how people buy and, and, and what their habits are. Um, so we can take a piece of vinyl, right, and you can stick it on the back of a truck, and it's kind of manly, and it's a, it's a bird or a duck or whatever it is, you know. Or you can take the same piece of vinyl but use a fancy font and put it in a, in a living room that says, you know, eat, pray, love or whatever, and you can actually sell it for 100 times percent more than you can the sticker you stick on the back of your truck. It's the same size. It's the same thing. Um, but you market it differently, and it's all psychological. Women, women, women hold the purse strings. I mean, you guys spend seventy percent of all the money in the world. You know, men, we're not that we're we're well, we are cheap, but we just we don't we don't need things as much. I mean, how um, many pair of shoes do you have versus versus him? You know, um, so so we can market to women um, a little differently, and um, and yeah, we can we can actually raise prices on things for the same same product from a different website. Do you install your own graphics? Mm, uh, I don't. I have. 
oh, I, I can, but I have employers, employees that do it. Um, Wallapills is a national company that we ship everywhere, so the end user actually takes the, the decal. And you've seen these things like it, um, was it like Uppercase Living? Like that was one of the first ones that started. Um, even in like uh, Hobby Lobby, like they'll have like these little graphics in a tube, you know, and you roll it out and you wipe it on your wall with, a, with your license or a credit card and then you pull off the transfer tape. Um, I actually manufacture those. I have a company that does that, so, um, so yeah. Question. Sir? Um, what what uh, social media would you recommend for advertising for like a startup business or new business? All of them. All of them. Um, <laughs> advertising is, uh, well, depending on what kind of company it is, right? Um, not, everybody's, uh, not everybody needs a Periscope. Not everybody needs, you know, um, a Yelp, uh, you know, things like that. Um, you know, depending on what type of company you're, you're in, I had a customer one time tell me, hey, I'm going to stop advertising in the newspaper because I'm going to put some money in social media. And that's a really stupid, really stupid comment. Um, social media hasn't taken the place of anything. It's just added to it. OK, um, it'd be like saying, hey, I, I bought a billboard on the on the north side of town, so I'm going to quit running in the newspaper. Well, if your customers um, are only on the north side of town, that's great. But if you've got customers on the south side, east or west, you're going to be missing out on those. You know, advertising has to be done in a, in, a, in a conglomerate scale. You have to advertise in print. You have to advertise online. You should advertise in TV and radio. Um, you should advertise on social media. You have to do it all. It doesn't take the place of anything. Um, but, uh, yeah, all of them. So, again, if you're an entertainment company, um, you know, you definitely want all of them. You know, Periscope's live, live tweeting. You guys know what Periscope is, right? Um, you know, if you're a doctor's office, obviously you're not going to be – live tweeting, you know, doing a surgery on somebody or something. So that's, that's, that's unnecessary, um, you know, but um, I think 87, if I'm not mistaken, 87% of the time when you search a business, their Facebook page comes up after their website and sometimes before their website. So um, you, you, can't, you can't discount what Facebook is. I know it's moving towards an older group. Um, our statistics say that, um, you know, Snapchat and Instagram are making a huge push, but they're not even touching. They're not scraping Facebook right now, um, you know, kids say they hate it, you know, because their mom's on it, but you guys really don't hate it because you still use it. I promise you, you do. I spend a lot of money um, to learn that, and um, and so I know you guys still use it, and you may not use it as much as you used to, but you still lurk, and you still stalk, and you still do the things that I want you to do so you can see my advertisements. Um, political campaigns um, are, are really, really big right now. Um, you guys are probably already getting emails and stuff and seeing sponsored ads from the two candidates at the moment. Um, you know, so um, uh, Obama really started, and I can't remember the numbers, so I don't even want to lie and make one up, but I, uh, it was in the, in, the, in the tens of millions. He was one of the first presidential candidates to really do social media and online, and that was eight years ago, you know, so it's been here for years, and it's just going to get bigger, so. Uh, YouTube, right now, I think YouTube, um, which Google owns now, um, I think it serves 1.6 billion videos a day. 1.6 billion, that's a B, 1.6 billion videos a day. It's one of my favorite places to advertise. Um, it's just because it's got such a huge following. If Google owns it, then, you know, follow the leader, right? Um, it's, uh, you can actually advertise on YouTube, not with a production company or post-production, but you can even advertise on YouTube with, a, with, with your cell phone. They're almost as good, you know, as, as some of the 4K camera equipment that come out, um, you know, but people, people aren't in for the long haul. They don't want to see a 10-minute video. They want to see a 30-second snippet. That's why Vine, even though Vine didn't really make it, uh, you know, Vine had it wrapped up. They were five- and ten-second videos, you know. We're, uh, we're uh, especially you guys, the, the, the ones that are younger, um, you know, you're, you're, you're into the instant gratification and the right right now and the me, 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 you know. I mean, I, I also wrote uh, research articles about the me, me, me generation, which is probably you guys, you know. I don't know how many selfies that I've seen come through. Um, you know, so uh, so as far as far as that goes, um, you know, you can advertise on YouTube and spend tens of millions of dollars on thirty-second snippet videos. So, all of them, pretty much all of them. Hey, Justin, I got a quick question. Uh, think of a person you hired recently, and why did you hire them? Um, my entire family works for me, so uh, they were my Otis uh, my Otis employees. Um, the last person, the last full-time person I hired, the last two full-time people I hired were actually Murray State uh, University uh, graduates. Um, 
One of them was just really, really cute, and I could not hire. I'm kidding. Um, uh, um, uh, motivation um, is is a, is a huge thing, you know, with with any employer. Um, uh, to to watch someone, you know, I, I get I get calls and I get emails, and especially from I got you know I got 78 students across across campus, and every day I walk in, they're like, oh, Professor Kimbrough, you need to hire me for an internship, you know, and and uh, I say, yeah, send me your resume, and send me your send me your portfolio, and let me see what you got. I don't just hire anybody. I have. Uh, Again, I, I, you know, I, I'm extremely picky, and I'm very, very particular, and I'm fairly anal, so I don't just let anybody come into our company. Um, and um, you know, this this one girl, she had emailed me, and I said, "Great, send me your resume and your portfolio. I'll take a look at it." Uh, we usually hire about four interns a year uh, if they leave. Uh, the last four we've hired have been there almost three years, and they just will not leave. Uh, so <laughs> I can't hire any new ones yet. Um, and and it took her two weeks to send me her her resume. You know, and it was just like, you know, that's 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 the that's the least amount of motivation I've seen from, you know, from somebody wanting an internship. Um, I've got an intern in Char uh, uh, let me rephrase that. I've got an old intern, a former intern in uh, Charlton, North Carolina, working for a, uh, a wedding magazine. I've got a, an old intern in uh, the Golden Triangle in North Carolina right now. He's building websites for Saks Fifth Avenue, BMW, and the and the U.S. Navy. Um, I've got an intern. I've got several interns that have started their own businesses in different towns and different cities around. Um, you know, so you, an internship is not something to take lightly. It's not something to just like, you know, say, hey, you meet, um, shoot you an email and, and see if you're hiring. Um, the things that you can learn from an internship, and, and again, of course, I'm a big Omnicon guy over in Wilson Hall. You know, Omnicon, um, they're, uh, uh, Mr. Norsworthy over there gets a lot of our students in, in, in the GCM department and Wilson Hall and the JMC department, Omnicon internships. And these are places in Chicago and, 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 uh, Austin, Texas, and there's one in uh, Cal Poly Noma in California, and um, a huge one in New York, and and um, and every one of these kids that go there are always offered a job right after. If you show any interest at all, if you show any motivation whatsoever, um, you know I've got I've got interns that are making you know over a million dollars a year annually. You know my own interns are making more money than me. It's not fair. Uh, you know so um, so so yeah. As as far as why did I hire the last two? Um, one for really, really motivation. Um, she she came in. She wouldn't take no for an answer. Um, I had no room in my office. We have 18 computers in there, and every one of them were full at the time. And um, she was so motivated, and she was so good that I ended up hiring her. She's been there five years now as a full-time employee. Um, she's really, really great. Somebody did email me one time and said, hey, dog, are you hiring? I didn't reply. So don't, don't do that. Don't don't do that. Sorry. Do you look for any specific like degree? Or do I have a specific degree? Do you look for any specific? I don't. Um, advertising, graphic design. I, I really don't. Um, I I was good at graphic design before I came to Murray State. I um, I could see things and I knew things and I could feel things that 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 most people can't. And and that's just a weird artist thing. Um, knowing what colors go together, knowing what fonts to use. Nobody taught me that. Um, some of the most amazing guys, even in this town, um, they never went to college. They didn't finish high school. You know, um, the guy that owns the the, the bowling alley. Um, you know, he's got a, a ten million dollar jet, and he didn't finish high school. He quit when he was sixteen. So, um, degrees really don't matter to me. Um, I don't hire anybody with a four point oh. It's actually the exact opposite. If you haven't grabbed the red wire and the black wire. And touch them together at least a few times in your life, I really don't want you. Um, you haven't learned enough. You haven't experienced enough. You know, you got to make some mistakes and you got to make some bad decisions. Without bad decisions, you can't make any good decisions. Um, you know, so um, I want somebody that's lived a little bit. Um, and we're artists, right? You know, we I wear shorts and flip-flops every day. This is the most dressed up that I get. So um, <laughs> congratulations on that. Um, so uh, we're, we're different. The, I went and spoke to a senior seminar two, two semesters ago. Um, over at Mason Hall, and uh, and I showed up in shorts and flip flops, and and the other professors were just absolutely appalled. You know, um, you dress for what you want. Um, I don't want somebody coming in a three piece suit. I don't want to be disrespected either. Don't get me wrong. I'm not telling you to go to an interview in shorts and flip flops, but you know, if you do your research about your about what company you're going into, and and um, and you you know, it's all about fitting. You know, whether it's a relationship with a boyfriend and a girlfriend, you guys got to fit together, right? It's the same thing with an employer and an employee. It's all about balance. It's all about fitting with each other. Um, so yeah, as far as a special degree, no. I'd rather them have experience uh, than any kind of degree ever in my industry. And that's not that's not I'm one percent of you know obviously uh, other employers out there. So.
Justin, I think you've done a great job answering questions, telling us about your company and your background. Really appreciate it. Uh, a, lot, a lot of good stuff there. Uh, I think probably a good time to wind it up. Uh, always leave your yep. audience wanting more, I guess. <laughs> <It's a good laughs> so, uh, and we really appreciate it. Uh, and I really appreciate you, you know, bringing some of that into Murray State in your classroom as well. That's awesome. Uh, and uh, any, any parting thoughts uh, before we take, I'm going to let my group classes take a break here and we'll come back and make 10 minutes. Well, I, uh, I grabbed the last two T-shirts at my office. I've got a large and an extra large. There's a, most of you guys can't fit in these, but um, I, need, I, need, I, need, I need a way to give away two T-shirts. So does anybody have a contest I can, like, throw these at you for? What? People who ask questions. Want them? How about, um, so, uh, gosh, how about something I, how about regurgitate something I said? Um, how many companies do I own? Thirteen. Thirteen. You're not here. I can't throw a T-shirt at you. She, he already has one 13? of your T-shirts. I gave him one here already. We'll just throw them out there. <laughs> larges, extra larges. Uh, thank you guys for having me. I hope I did all right. I'm not really a speaker. I'm, you know, again, I'm a, I'm a closet rat. So, um, you know, send me an email. Thanks, Dr. Johnson, Big for having me. Big applause for Justin Kimbrough from Madisonville, Hopkinsville, Murray, and Paducah, all four sites. Thank you. Thank you very much.